welcome to In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver. The program is brought to you by Davis, Davis Media Access, and it broadcasts on David uh, Community Television. That's Comcast Channel 15 and uh, AT&T UVerse Menu 99. We're also online at dctv.davismedia.org, so you can go and log on and check us out there. Joining me today is uh, Susan Lintz, who, with her husband, runs a very successful nonprofit here in downtown Davis. It's uh, the Logos Use Book Bookstore, and uh, the wonderful uh, reasons for having her here is that um, the bookstore is just so much more than a bookstore. Uh, first of all, it, uh, it has something unique about it, and, uh, namely it gives uh, Susan and Peter Lindt give all their proceeds to charity, as we will um, discover a bit later in the interview. But uh, it's also a very quaint, quiet place where you can browse the most unique uh, books uh, in, uh, that I've seen in a long time. And, uh, but especially it's also a uh, cultural center for our community here in Davis. Uh, they, uh, Susan and Peter organize several events as we will see. So Susan, welcome to the show and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Lynn. It's really a pleasure to be here and uh, a fun, I know we're gonna have a fun talk today. I know we will. So I understand, what I'm going to ask you is, I understand 2013 has been a banner year for Logos uh, book, books. Um, can you tell me why? Well, we were very pleased this year. Um, we did start, uh, actually this is our fourth birthday coming up in February 20th. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Four you. years. Yes, we're quite <laughs> proud that we've managed to hang in there. and. Uh, my husband had begun this business quite a while ago in 2000, but it was an online business for the first 10 years. And in 2010, he thought he'd like to begin a bricks and mortar store, so we did that. And the first year in business, we were hoping we would not be in the red. And to our surprise, we were able to give $10,000 after we paid our expenses to both Doctors Without Borders and Save the Children. The next year, we were able to give 22000 the following year, which would have been last year, would have been uh, 35000 And this year, we managed to give $40,000. So we were very pleased that every That's year... That's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's very, very nice. It's a very nice success story for the store. And I think it's really also a tribute to the many lovely customers we have and our wonderful volunteers who help make it all possible. So we're very pleased and very happy for our charities as well. What gave you the idea to start uh, a uh, brick store, so to speak? Yes, the bricks and mortar store was the idea of my husband, Peter. And the whole idea of beginning an online bookstore that gave its money to charity began, as I said, in 2000 when he'd retired from the university. Um, he had been a professor of mathematics and computer science for years. And he, I thought, thought rather, rather wisely that he just didn't want to come and stay home or play tennis or whatever, he thought he'd really like to continue doing something. And he loves books, he loves to read, and he started this business of Logos Books online. And 10 years later in 2010, when I was already retired from Solano College, where I had taught for years, um, we both decided that it might be the moment to begin a bricks and mortar store in town. At that time, we had quite a few bookstores. We had um, Borders Books yes, in town. Which closed. Yes, it did, yes. unfortunately. Um, Avid Reader, who is thankfully still in business and doing very, very well. Yes. And a lovely bookstore, Sweetbriar Books, that was located near the co-op and did very well for many years. Um, and slowly, uh, since we began in 2010, both Borders and Sweetbriar um, are no longer with us. So now we're in a very interesting position in that we're basically the only secondhand bookstore in Davis, um, with the exception of a small book 
nook that I want to mention that the SPCA has as well. Yes. Which is lovely. They, which is they, lovely. It yes. is nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, intrigued me, uh, as I said at the beginning, is uh, first of all the type of books that you have, mm -hmm. which are very interesting, and, uh, uh, but also all the cultural events that, uh, that uh, you uh, uh, promote and sponsor and mm -hmm. participate in. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, let's start with the books. Right. How do you stock your store, and who uh, who chooses them, and who gives them? <laughs> it is a good question. Them? Right. Where are they coming from? Where are they coming these from? books. Some of them are fantastic, and you have foreign language books. Yes, too, we do. Which yes, are very do. rare. Yes, in Davis. it's hard to find those. Yes. And and I think that we plead. Peter and I both plead guilty on the foreign language because he is a European, um, and his native language is German. And I taught French for many years at Solano College, and also speak some Spanish. So we naturally decided that we were going to have those because we ourselves love them and we knew that there would be people who would like to yes. have them as well. And we're looking for them. We're looking for them. Yes. Um, so the way we get the books, um, there are really two ways. One, we have to thank the many people that donate to us, um, and that is a wonderful source of books. We do accept all donations, and uh, people can bring them in any time between 10 and 8 when we're open, Tuesdays through Sundays, basically. Um, By the way, you are on 2nd Street. Yes, we are, yes. 513 2nd Street in yes. Davis. So we're very central to downtown, and I always tell people to bring them in early in the the morning when they can park close by yes. because books are very heavy to yes. carry. Um, but the other way and the way Peter and I spend our weekends is to go to the many, many book sales that are given around the Bay Area and in Northern California uh, because if we depended only on the donations, uh, we would have a very lopsided collection. We want to make sure that we have books in math in ancient history, in humor, in cooking, in children's books, in religion, philosophy, all the different areas that people Very like wide to read. Range. Right. Yes. And we don't want to be just a narrow bookstore that would have only contemporary fiction and personal health, help or health books. Um, so for that reason, we do go out and try to supplement by uh, the collection by by purchasing the books we feel we need to have. And in those two ways, donations and our own shopping trips, um, we're able to have, I think, a very nice and somewhat eclectic collection. It's a very eclectic collection, but it must be a lot of work. Uh, do you, do you have volunteers who help you sort and uh, well, discard some of the, the, the books that come in? That's a good question. At this point, we basically are using the volunteers to man the store or woman the store when we're gone. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, on a weekday mornings and afternoons and on the weekends, we have volunteers in the store who are, who are selling the books for us. At this point, we haven't found a very good way, I'm afraid, for us to sort through because Peter and I know what's in the store and what we need and what we don't need, and we also know how to price the books. It's difficult to have someone else at that point do that. Yes. But the volunteers are amazingly helpful to us mm -hmm. because they permit us to have the time to do that. Yes. So that is really why we're so pleased to have them. We also have an assistant manager who oversees the, the, volunteers the volunteers on the weekend yes. so that we can get away and not be concerned about that when we're gone. So uh, without the volunteers, I think we wouldn't be as successful as we have been. We're very grateful to them. Yes, but uh, and, and of course the, um, um, the, um, uh, the pricing of the books must be uh, very interesting. Do you have any guidelines? So you just... Uh, you just guess a little bit of guesswork. <laughs> a little bit of guesswork. It's, um, it's interesting because I think the 10 years that Peter spent online gave him a very good sense of the value of books. Yes. And uh, we try to keep the books, for example, I manage the children's room. I try to keep the books fairly inexpensive because I really want to encourage the children to read. Yes. And uh, I think that they should be something they can come in and not feel they're spending a lot of money and to read quite a bit. Um, and we do, I think that's the principle that's throughout the store is we feel that we want people to come in and find something that is very affordable and that they can basically read it and if they want they can donate it back to us mm -hmm. uh, and, and that works out well as well. So uh, it, 
I think there are some books that are a little bit more expensive. These are the books that are usually in an area, for example, I want to say mathematics or physics, mm -hmm. or an area that's a very different area of, of history or perhaps art books, art books for example, yes. that have lovely pictures. Um, these might be some of our more expensive items. But in general, we have very, very few books in the store that I'd say are over uh, Fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. Most of them, I would say, most of the contemporary fiction and literature run between four and eight dollars. Yeah. So I think that's very doable for most people. Uh, it is, and uh, and of course, uh, forty thousand dollars in one year. I mean, it's yes. fantastic. Yes. Now, you you mentioned two charities, Save the Children and uh, Doctors Without Borders. Right. Um, May I ask why these Absolutely. two charities? Absolutely. Yes. These are the two charities my husband started with when he began the online business. And I have to say, he does nothing without thinking it through. He's a true mathematician. mathematician. <laughs> yes. And I think he, he felt um, that the community we live in is, is very fortunate. Um, most of us are fairly affluent and have quite a bit. And I think he felt that the charities he chose, he wanted them to be outside this community sure so that the money that we were giving could be going to support people in parts of the world who had far less and for this reason uh, the these are the charities we've chosen that being said I know save the children does quite a bit in the United States they do mm -hmm. they do and they are uh, uh, they're a very well-known charity and uh, yes uh, so so this is this is a very nice formula that you have here. right and, and just to interject as yes. well another reason reason that we chose these is that he also researched to find the charities that gave the bulk of their money to the actual works they were supporting rather than the overhead. structure and the overhead. The overhead so yes. those were the other that was the other reason that I wanted to mention. So we feel very comfortable with both those charities and we feel that they're well known. Um, they're reputable, mm -hmm. and we can feel comfortable about mm -hmm. giving the money to mm -hmm. them. And I know that uh, Doctors Without Borders have, uh, are doing a fantastic job, and um, they also uh, received the Nobel Prize. Yes, in, in, in yes. In the Peace, yes. Peace Nobel Prize, so, so they are credible, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. uh, to say the least. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, but as I mentioned at the beginning, um, uh, there's a couple of things before I go on to the cultural mm -hmm. salon that you have with mm -hmm. all these events. Um, I was intrigued by the name Logos, uh, of course. Uh, now I understand it better because uh, your husband is a mathematician. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, and Logos, I believe, in, in Aristotle used to call it, uh, for, for him it meant logic and mm -hmm. order. And the but word also is, is logos. Uh, so logos. ethos and logos, and I think he felt ethos that. Ethos and logos uh -huh. and pathos, pathos. The, mm -hmm. the three words, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, a very nice sounding word. Yes, and yes. it's interesting because I think in the beginning it was a little bit of a confusion because I think people, some people thought it might be a religious bookstore, mm -hmm. which we're not. And also another little confusion sometimes comes because there's a very large and well-known Logos bookstore in Santa Cruz. And we're not affiliated with them either. It's I just see. a little bit of a coincidence. But uh, yes, you're right. I think there is yeah. a mathematical yeah. connection there, Lynn. Well, and also the um, I can understand the Christian because I was looking it up while I was mm -hmm. preparing the interview. Mm -hmm. And one of the other meanings is also God. Yes. Logos is God. Yes. So, uh, But I think most people just go in. And find out, hopefully. <laughs> and find out <laughs> what it is. Yes. But this is just, uh, you know, I, I was strained as a linguist, so that's yes. one of my Yes, uh, so that was your pet. interest. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, but let's, uh, let's talk about, um, uh, I've noticed uh, that uh, you, you, uh, your, the bookstore is often uh, featured in, um, uh, in the Davis Enterprise. You've right. got at least seven or eight articles, uh -huh. and this is because of all the events that you put together. Uh, and for example, uh, you have La Table Française, which is advanced French conversation, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think, once a month. Or, yes, yes, we do. Once mm -hmm. a month. Then you have uh, the Sacramento Poets uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, reading their works. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. what else do you have? Well. This is interesting, and I, I loved the fact that you called it a salon. How, how lovely of you to say that. Oh, it is. That's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, but I think that we've... There are some comfortable chairs. Yes, so. there, there are. We, <laughs> we, we, can, we can sit down and, and uh, get into it. But um, I think that we felt 
that we did want the bookstore not only to be a moneymaker for charity, but we felt that with the changing platform for reading. We all know that um, the Kindle and the electronic book is not going to go away. So we didn't want to um, ignore the fact that bookstores are really a place for people to come together, um, to browse, to look for something they've never even thought of reading before, but also to come together and chat about the books they read and also an exchange of ideas. And this idea of a salon, a place where you exchange ideas and enjoy exploring different things. And you meet friends, yes, too. Yes, exactly. Is, and uh, by the way, you don't, uh, you also have a Spanish. We do. We have a Spanish a, a Circulo Espanol. And yes. we have La Table Francaise. Yes. Um, I would love to have a German group. I haven't a moderator for that yet. But um, it's nice because these groups are people that have studied French, have studied Spanish, have a certain competency in it, and would just like to have the opportunity to practice it. Yes. And, and that's what the emphasis is on. So the French group meets the second Wednesday of the month, the, the Spanish group the third Monday of the month in the evening. And it's very just very informal. We usually have a subject that we post on our uh, web page, yes. Logos Used Books. Oh, no, excuse, excuse me, it's Logos Books at or dot WordPress dot com. Yes, and it's Logos Books dot, dot WordPress dot com. Yes, and, and we'll have it. Displayed. Yeah, and we'll put yes. it, and people yes. will come and find the topic. And there's usually an article to read or something that we're going to discuss so people know beforehand. And it's just very nice. People can come and just listen or they can participate as much as they like. And that works very well for them, I think. Do you have uh, similar events or activities for children or for um, musicians? Um, well, we, we tried once to have a, a children's a reading uh, group. group, but yes. that doesn't work as well, I think, because the Davis Library does such a splendid job true. with all of theirs. It's so true. I think we, we decided that probably that wouldn't work. There's been much trying of things, and we kind of we had a philosophers group for a while that came and sp and discussed philosophy, and that worked for a little bit. And then the people that did that graduated and went on. They were mostly yes. students at UC Davis. Well, there's no reason that it shouldn't be fluid. Right, I mean, it comes and goes. It, it, there's more variety. Right, but uh, perhaps. Uh, um, uh, something for children with uh, foreign language, perhaps? It, we could perhaps in the mm -hmm. future. I think that the Davis Arts Center does different things for students in terms of, or children for foreign language. Yes. We do have, as you mentioned, um, a Quentin Duval poetry series. This is a poetry series that was in honor of a colleague of mine who passed away about three years ago. And he was a very well-known poet. He taught as a, co as a colleague of mine at Solano College. And he was a really vibrant person in the Sacramento poetry scene. So we have uh, usually every other month in the academic year uh, a poetry reading. Usually two poets are featured. And tonight, in fact, we're going to have one, though I know by the time your program airs, this will be history. Yes. Um, but again, on our on our blog, as I mentioned, logosbooks.wordpress.com, people can always find what the latest uh, poetry reading is and when it will be. Um, and so that's just been a very big pleasure and a big discovery for me because I was never a very much of a poetry fan, and yes. I feel like I've learned enormously by being allowed to sit in on those and and uh, host them. Oh, that's that sounds wonderful. Um, the um uh, the other thing, uh, you mentioned that uh, you were an academic and mm -hmm. you were teaching and, and so on. Uh, can you tell me a little more about your experience with the bookstores? None, <laughs> except for the online. Right. My husband's was basically, he learned it as he did it over the 10 years from 2000 yeah. to 2010. And I watched him and I would help him at book sales we, we went to. He would tell me what he was looking for and I would help him purchase the books. But really, I had no retail experience whatsoever. For both of us, this is quite an adventure because we were both in, he in academe and I in the community college as well. Um, and we were basically, uh, he a researcher and, and a professor and I a community college instructor. So that was really our background. Yes. And uh, it is very interesting. I've learned quite a bit and I have a great deal of respect for the Davis merchants. I think they do a wonderful job. They try to be very open and inviting and inclusive of all of the people that come to the downtown. I feel that they do a splendid job. And I'm very honored to be a member of the downtown Davis uh, group. Great. I think it's great. 
are you in touch with the literary community in Davis, like the authors? There are a number of authors uh, quite there are. well known. Mm -hmm. Do they donate to some of their I, books? I suppose, <laughs> yes. I think we have had Max Bird. We've had different people donate yes. books to us. Um, I know that the Avid Reader does such a splendid job with its readers series. They do, yes. And uh, we've, we've uh, decided in a sense not to do that because uh, I think that a lot of times what the Avid Reader does so well is they feature the books afterwards that yes. their readers... And this is not such an easy thing for us because um, we're trying basically to offer books at a very inexpensive and price. Used. And used. Yes. And, and the readers are, are not reading used books, they're reading their <laughs> brand new books and they would like to sell their brand new books. Yes. So I think that that's a much better fit for Avid Reader and they do such a good job. Yes, so and they have a very nice niche. They and, do, and they do. And they both have different Yes, types, so. and we try to satisfy different different demands and wishes of our community. Uh, we're just about out of time. Ah, okay. But uh, quickly, uh, what is your um, dream for the future uh, within the um, the book, this enterprise that you've started, this non-profit, how would you like to, would you like to expand or would you like to uh, have a chain? Would you like to <laughs> have a chain? Oh, I think that I think that sounds like probably more than we would be able to handle. But it's a good question, and I think as um, my husband and I are very interested in having the store continue for as long as we can have it continue, yes. and if we can find people that are interested in helping us have it continue, we would be very welcome to work with them so that it can in the future. And that's our big dream, I think, is to have it continue being there for everybody as long as it can. Thank you so much for joining us. It's I'm, been a I'm, pleasure, Lynn. I'm, it's been a pleasure for, for me, and uh, you're really an example for the community, <laughs> which is you. great. So um, I'm afraid we'll have to go. Okay. So uh, Susan Lynch, uh, the... Uh, uh, Logos Book Store, used bookstore owner mm -hmm. with her husband Peter. Thank you so much for coming. Their website again is uh, book, uh, Logos Books uh, dot, dot WordPress dot uh, com. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you so much, all of you, for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see this program again, you can log on to our website, dctv dot and uh, check us out, check some of our other programs you've been watching in the studio. I'm Lynn Weaver from all of us here at Davis Media Access. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.